In sports, the difference between being a champion and being a bridesmaid can be razor thin. NASCAR is not only one of these sports, but it also has epitomized this multiple times. When it comes to NASCAR championships, no season is quite like the 1992 season in its aspects, and no driver would know this better than Bill Elliott after 1992. This is the story of a season. While Elliott started the year poorly with a 27th at Daytona, he would go on an insane tear over the next four races. Nice big fuel is simply for to stop this. This light. One to go. One to go, and he had to come in for fuel. Mm. But nobody's there. They don't have it now. They found some. They, they weren't <laughs> expecting it because, I mean, when he came down pit road, they were looking for a fuel can. They don't know what he wants. There it is. It's a, it's a little gas and a little ether in the carburetor. And here comes Bill Elliott. Poised to win his first race for Junior Johnson in the Budweiser Ford. Takes home the laurels and the winner's share of the Goodrich 500. And again, Elliott on the outside draws away. Here comes Kowicki back in the main straightaway. Made it up that time. One leg in right now. One lap to go. This is for everything. It's Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia on the outside. Wisconsin's Alan Kowicki on the inside. Side by side down the back straightaway. Even as they go to turn three. Kowicki there. Elliott pulls a little ahead on the outside. Driving for the finish. Here comes Kowicki up on the bottom of the racetrack. Kowicki going for all of it. They touch and across the line. It's Elliott. Bill Elliott has done it by about a foot to a foot and a half. First and second turn and is on his way to making it three in a row. Gant runs alone in second place as he flashes across the line. But Bill is definitely awesome today. He's won three of four races if he can only make it to the checkered flag. He comes out the number four turn, Paul. He can slide the rest of the way. And here comes Bill Elliott. Three in a row as Elliott wins on his hometown track here at Atlanta. Here's the white flag for Bill Elliott. One more lap to go. How about since, since the North Wilkesburg, uh, that's when Dale Earnhardt won. And then Ford did win the race at Charlotte. Last lap for Elliott. I would imagine that Budweiser crew. There's a race for position. Yeah, the 26 car of uh, Brad Bodine has. No, I don't know, think that was for position. Bodine is a lap. No, down. you're right. Yeah. Brad is in fifth. That's what I get for thinking. Here comes Elliott off the corner. Checkered flag is waiting. There it is. Elliott wins his fourth consecutive Winston Cup race in 1992. Elliott won four straight races, but Daytona 500 winner Davey Allison still had a 48-point lead over him. Because of this, it hurt Elliott's point situation more over the next two weeks as he scored two straight 20th place finishes, dropping him to third in points, 106 behind Allison. And in the subsequent four races, Elliott fell even further behind Allison as second, 10th, 13th and 14th place runs still weren't enough to keep up. But as luck would have it, being fourth in points, 117 back would be the furthest back he would be of the championship all season. At Sonoma, Elliott scored a top five while Allison finished a lap down in 28th. Awesome Bill was only 31 back in third now. And the cuts into the 28th lead continued at Pocono. While Allison led 34 laps, he still finished two spots behind Elliott with the final result of fifth. The Dawsonville native was as close to the lead as he had been all season, only 21 back. Allison would strike back the following Sunday at Michigan. Coming down, looking for that bonus, looks like he's going to nail it. Here he comes out of turn number four, and for the second straight year, the winner of the Michigan 400 is from the Alabama gang. The win held Elliott back, now 67 points out of the lead. But it was only temporary, as Elliott started to diminish Allison's lead at the season's halfway point at Daytona. Heading back to Pocono, the gap was 46, and both teams were looking to improve their top five runs they had at Pocono in June. Allison looked to be the one striking a decisive blow as he started from the pole and led a majority of the race. But on the 151st lap of the race, the first turning point of the 92 Winston Cup season flew. Out of the way now, top of Penny. to the guardrail, side over side, end over end, and Davey Allison has experienced a horrifying crash. The 28 Haviland Ford flipped 11 times in 4 seconds. He was airlifted to a local hospital, where he would endure 
four and a half hours of surgery. The driver of the 28 had a broken and dislocated right wrist, a broken right forearm, and a broken right collarbone. But in Allison's words, he was down but not out. Elliot later on, after Allison's crash, went on to claim a nine-point lead. It was the first time all season that Davey Allison wasn't the points leader. The lead didn't last long, though, as Allison jumped ahead by a lone point after a third-place run at Talladega. But the short-term valiant effort would soon be forgotten. Elliot began to outpace Allison, as it was clear that the injuries he had suffered were affecting him. Over the next six races, Elliot grabbed three top fives and another top ten, as well as a low of two 14th place finishes. The run was capped off by a second place run at Dover, leading 261 laps. The championship looked decided as Elliott had had a 154 point lead over Allison with six races left. This was where the second turning point of the season came, and for Elliott, it couldn't have been at a worse time. The blown engine started a season defining five race span. He finished 30th, and then 26th, and then 30th again, due to a bad sway bar at Charlotte. The terrible streak opened up the championship battle as well, as not only was Elliott's lead only 39 points over Allison, but only 47 over the underdog Alan Kowicki. And not much further behind them were three more players in Mark Martin, Harry Gant, and Kyle Petty. While a fourth place finish at the Rock helped, the full season's worth of effort was in question after the penultimate race at Phoenix. Elliott finished a season low of 31st, dropping him 40 points behind Allison and 10 behind Alan Kowicki. Heading into Atlanta, six drivers mathematically were in the hunt, but the NASCAR world was really only looking at three guys, Allison, Kowicki, and Elliott. All three drivers' hearts leapt up, though, on just the second lap. Left. Oh, and we have a spin. Bodine is in the fence. So is Rick Mass. Left. Oh! The race's opening set the tone for the finale's run. Points leader Davey Allison struggled while Elliott and Kulwicki ran in the top five. Allison's car had rear-end damage from the crash. As for Kulwicki, he lost first gear early in the race on pit road. With Elliott leading, the path was opening up for him to get the title. Kulwicki and Elliott continued to swap the lead back and forth, neither giving each other an inch. Meanwhile, Allison was mired further back in the pack. Due to hitting a roll of duct tape left on Jeff Gordon's car, Allison had more damage on the front of his car as well. But due to quick work from his pit crew, he was quickly up in the top five soon enough. He had the title in hand until fate had another decision. Time to do it. But for the last three years here, he has earned more oh, points. Oh, oh, look crash. out. Davey Allison is in the crash Oh, Ernie Irvin, and it's all over for Davey Allison. No, it's not over yet. I don't think he hit him that hard, maybe. Now, for Elliott, Kowicki was the only competition left. The objective for the championship was simplified. Elliott needed to get in front of the seven and lead the most laps. Neither had enough fuel, though, to make the finish. One pit stop and the closing laps were all that was left for either to win the championship. Each driver stayed out longer than their window, Kowicki staying out an extra three laps to lead. Going down pit road, all he needed was a gas-and-go stop. Unfortunately for him, though, the car may not have gotten enough fuel, according to their fuelman. Elliott cycled out in the lead. But, because Terry Labonte stayed out an extra lap, it meant that Kulwicki would lead the most laps in the race. Elliott would only be able to see the championship drift away behind him as Kulwicki was saving fuel. Elliott led 102 laps and route to a win. Kulwicki led 103 laps and route to a championship. Kulwicki won the title by 10 points. Had Elliott led two more laps the championship would have been his in a tiebreaker. Elliott raced full-time for 11 more seasons and scored five more wins in that time. He would never finish higher than eighth in points again, though, and it makes many wonder after 1992. What if Elliott could have led that extra lap instead of Terry Labonte? What if he doesn't finish 30th or worse three times in the last six weeks? What if, in 1992, Bill Elliott captured his missing ring?